Home builders are taking heavy losses across the US housing market, with some even seeing a colossal 60% reduction in home buyer demand. And of course, these losses that home builders are taking, well, they're gonna be gains for you all out there as the regular home buyer, because we are seeing a massive release of discounted inventory of new homes onto the housing market. For instance, the price on this brand new move-in ready home in Jacksonville was just cut by $16,000 down to an affordable $399,000, yet there's still Still very little buyer interest. These builders, they're gonna have to cut the price more into the future because what a lot of people don't understand and what you all need to be paying attention to is that there is a massive backlog of home building inventory that yes, it started to hit the housing market over the last couple months. Well, it's going to burst into the housing market over the next couple months because right now we're in a historic situation, everyone, where the number of newly built homes sold has now collapsed to a five-year low. You can see See the blue line only at 511,000 seasonally adjusted in July. Well, that new sales number is now below the yellow line, which is the number of single family homes actively under construction. This is the first time in US history, according to US Census Bureau data, that home builders are building significantly more homes than they're selling, which is gonna mean into the future, we're gonna have an even bigger pile up of this brand new home building inventory. And to really understand how colossal this inventory wave is gonna be, we gotta go beyond the data and actually look at some real life new building developments. And that's exactly what I did here in North Dallas. I took a drive to some home builder sites and folks, get ready for what I'm about to show you. It's gonna shock you. Tons and tons of new homes under construction. A lot of these homes are almost completed. I want you to focus on the signs. For sale, for sale. These homes are being built on spec, everyone. There's no buyers for them. And on this street here, for sale, for sale, for sale, both sides of the street. Like we're talking in this development, I mean, there's hundreds of homes that are actively under construction and for sale. Quite literally, that's like a mid 2000s housing bubble level of home building. And you can see most of those signs were for sale, for sale, available. Very few of those homes that are about three to four months from construction were already sold. And so that means the fall and winter housing market is going to get even worse for these home builders. And we're gonna see the inventory just continue to pile up. It's not gonna stop. And the prices are gonna continue to go down for you as a home buyer. And of course, I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to this fact. This is no longer a secret that inventory is piling up than home builders are going crazy. Because if we look at a recent survey by Consumer Affairs, they polled Americans and found out that 78% of Americans expect a housing crash to come over the next two years. And on top of that, 63% of Americans actually want a housing crash to come, while 80% want a more mild correction to occur, which is a crazy level of consensus. Four-fifths of Americans expect a housing crash to occur and want that correction to occur, which means it's obviously going to occur. This is why mortgage applications are so low today. This is why home sales are so low today, because we are on boycott from the housing market. We want nothing to do with this grossly inflated, overpriced monstrosity of a housing market that yes, now it's crashing, the crash has started, but it still has a long way to go before regular home buyers are gonna draw back into the market. And oh yeah, by the way, we have a long way to go before investors come back into the market because now every day we are seeing a new article come out about a new real estate investor bailing on the housing market. Two months ago, it was Starwood Residential selling off their portfolio. One month ago, it was Open Door heavily discounting their inventory. Now it's Blackstone, a single family landlord owned by Blackstone has now officially halted home purchases in 38 cities across America. Meanwhile, other Wall Street landlords like KKR, American Homes for Rent, and Amherst Holdings have slashed their home buying activity by more than 50%, which is why these home builders are really struggling right now, why they're having to release so much discounted inventory because they really just have no buyers right now. In fact, Toll Brothers, one of the largest home builders in America, they focus on luxury new build properties typically worth a million dollars or more. They just reported in the most recent quarter a 60% decline in contract signings and home sales. Take a look at this, everyone. Last year in the same quarter, they had 3,100 new contracts. Now they only have 1,200 new contracts in 2022. And when that home buyer demand goes down so much for these home builders, it results in a huge surge in the amount of discounted inventory that these builders are putting out onto the market, specifically something that's called quick moving. 
move-in inventory, which is homes that are available to move in in the next three months. Data from Zonda is showing a massive surge, nearly a tripling in the level of quick move-in inventory available from home builders. Now, the same as it was before the pandemic and very soon in coming months, it's gonna be way higher than it was. Because when I drive around my local neighborhood and I see all of the homes that are actively under construction, I know that in the next one to two quarters, these homes are gonna get delivered and be sitting on the market. Almost every single one of these homes that's now under construction, you can see the sign says available, meaning that it doesn't have a buyer yet. ETA, fall, winter 2022, all these homes are coming to the market. Prices are gonna come down even more, everyone. But here's the thing about all this home building. It is not evenly distributed around America. In fact, it's very concentrated in specific pockets around the US. And I know that a lot of you want to understand if your state and your city is going to see this perpetual increase in inventory from these home builders. And I developed a metric actually that I'm about to show you that's gonna tell you just how crazy home builders have gone in your state and city. And that metric is housing permits per capita, which you can see exemplified on this map. We're taking a look very simply at the number of housing permits pulled in 2021 and dividing it by the level of population. And you can see it's the states in red which have the most home building. Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Texas, Florida. So in Florida, there was 214,000 housing permits pulled in 2021. Population in Florida is 21.8 million, which means that there was 9.8 permits pulled per 1,000 people. And what's fascinating about that home building data is just the tremendous differences that exist across America. It's really like 10 to 15 states that have a majority of the building. But then if you go to states like New York or Michigan or Illinois, there's only two permits permits per 1,000 people, literally 80% less. And make no mistake, this housing crash will be worse in the areas that home builders have gone the craziest because they are still building a huge number of homes and apartments in most of these locations. Now, a common objection to the data I just presented, and I think a lot of you are thinking about already, is you might be saying, well, wait a minute, Nick. I get how certain states are building more, but don't certain states receive more people in terms of migration? Like, shouldn't Florida and Texas be building building more than Illinois because they receive more people? And the answer is yes. However, there's a problem with relying on inbound migration as a consistent means of home buyer demand. And the problem is that migration is not consistent. It will go up, it will go down. And now I believe we are heading into an era where we're gonna see fewer and fewer people move to the states that are building the most homes. And this is something that's playing out in real time. Take a look at this article from CNBC, which is talking about how the end of Roe v. Wade is changing millennials' career plans and where they're choosing to live. For instance, Christy Bradford, a 32-year-old who lives in Los Angeles, was gonna move to Oklahoma for a $300,000 job. However, after Roe v. Wade was overturned, she decided to stay in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, Damian Peters, a 39-year-old, was ready to move his wife and five-year-old son from D.C. to Austin, Texas. However, now that Roe v. Wade is overturned and Texas has restrictive abortion laws, he's saying Austin is off the table. And based off this, some are predicting that red states will see a brain drain of highly educated and highly paid professionals who want to live in states where safe abortions are accessible. And I would encourage a lot of you just like throw out your opinion on Roe v. Wade and abortion for a second and just look at the facts. The fact is, is that three years ago, moving to states like Tennessee and Texas was a dream for a lot of highly educated liberal people who were fleeing California and New York. However, moving to these states is no longer as enticing for a large segment of the population. So naturally, we are going to see fewer people move to these areas for political reasons. Reasons. Maybe it has to do with abortion or maybe it just has to do with the fact that these pandemic boom states that build the most homes and that receive the most migration over the last three years have just become way too expensive and their value proposition isn't nearly as high as it used to be. But of course, this isn't just about abortion and politics. This is about the fact that migration is a cyclical beast. It surges and it declines. And in 2020 and 2021, we were in a surge of people moving to the South, literally a record number number of people moved to the South in 2021. But as you can see historically over the last three decades, there's peaks and there's valleys to this migration. And we are going to enter a valley very, very soon in terms of people moving to red states. And if you're a home buyer or a real estate investor who wants to take advantage of this shift in the housing cycle, the thing to do right now would be 
avoid all these states that are building a lot of homes and start looking in the areas that are building fewer homes. Often the prices in these states are more affordable and they're likely to see more people move in over the next couple years. So I wanna know, do you agree with my opinion, everyone, that we are gonna see fewer people move to states like Texas and Florida and Tennessee into the future and that we're gonna see more people stay in the Northeast and California. We're gonna see more people potentially move to the Midwest where it's more affordable. Let me know your thoughts below on this video. In particular, are you moving somewhere? Do you know someone who's moving somewhere? What are you seeing in terms of this migration? You guys are my eyes and ears on the ground, so let me know in the comment section below, and also make sure to just smash that like button.